In this morning's Health Week, Health Week. <laughs> health It's a Watch. new segment we're trying. It is sweeping the nation. <laughs> The South Beach Diet. <laughs> the book became a bestseller eight years ago and caused a revolution in the dieting world. From cutting carbs to swearing off sweets, the South Beach Diet changed the way many Americans slimmed down. The South Beach Diet was one of the first books and plans that came out that affected the largest probably amount of Americans to change the proportion of nutrients they were eating. The program replaced so-called bad fats with good fats, like nuts and oils, and bad carbs with good carbs, like those from veggies, whole grains, and fruit. When your heart beats, it's like lifting a weight. And the it weight came from good. Miami cardiologist Arthur Agatston, who created the diet to help his cardiac and diabetic patients lose weight. We were very successful at reversing the risk factors for heart disease. Many people told us we had to write a book and give this to the general public. That was the origin of the South Beach diet. He released the book in 2003, and it spent nearly four years on the New York Times bestseller list. I think that when the book came out, it changed the way that people were dieting in the sense that they became aware that they can eat carbs and fats and protein, and they didn't need to exclude one of those nutrients. Since then, the South Beach diet has expanded into a website and a dozen books, selling 23 million copies worldwide. And Dr. Arthur Agatson is with us this morning to talk about his new book, The South Beach Wake-Up Call, Why America is Still Getting Fatter and Sicker. Good morning. Good morning. Good <laughs> to be with you. Nice so to have you with us. Those words that, will definitely, definitely yeah. act as a wake-up call. Um, the book has been wildly successful, as we mentioned, of course. But, you know, people buy the book. You can't make them follow all the advice. So then why are we, in your estimation, getting fatter, getting sicker when we know what to do? Well, we're spending our days slumped over computers. Then we grab some fast food on the way home for dinner. Then we stay up half the night watching TV, staring at computer screens, and not exercising. And these are unintended consequences of the march of technology. It's just like uh, air pollution was caused by the Industrial Revolution. It's all fixable. You have a, a, a term for the age group between 30 and 45. You call them Generation S. So yeah, that the, doesn't mean slim. That's, no, no, that's the sickest generation. And they're really the first fast food video game generation. And for the first time in people born since World War II, their rates of heart attacks are actually going up, mm. not down. And there's, it, what they're really proving is a fast food sedentary lifestyle tr is trumping the effects of our medical advances. In older age groups are decreasing heart attack rates. So whether it's the, 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 the folks in Generation S like, S like Eric and I or, or anybody else, what, what can we or should we be doing right now to change our diets? Well, it's, you know, it's happening in, in young, educated women. We call them the super moms. Um, they're, they're, like bringing up their kids, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're bringing up their kids on, on healthy food. They're exercising more. The problem is when the kids go to school, they're exposed to the fast food often. Mm -hmm. We have had a school program called the HOPS program. We had kids with less weight gain, lower blood pressures, and better standardized test scores. And they embrace good food. It can be done. It's being done. It's got to, we got to spread it. So you're we saying we got to start, we have to start it early and, and spread it out. You also talk about gluten. Gluten seems to be in many ways the new buzzword. It's a very serious issue for people who have a gluten allergy. But it seems people who are not allergic to gluten are kind of embracing this as well. I mean, is it a fat or is it something that we should cut out of our diet? No, I think it's, it's really real. Gluten is a protein in bread. And over the last 50 years, the bread we're eating today and the gluten in it is not the bread that our grandparents and great-grandparents were consuming. And we're consuming so much more processed wheat than ever before that it's causing all a myriad of problems from arthritis, psoriasis, uh, reflux, um, really, and even, even migraine headaches making us feel lousy. And if they have, people have celiac disease, it can be tested for. Mm -hmm. We recommend the South Beach Gluten Solution Try a month off wheat. A lot more of us are intolerant to it than we previously thought. A couple quick tips you have. Get a good night's sleep. Eat as a family. That's a great one. And sit less. But you talk about sitting at the desk. The ideal meal for you is what? Oh, salmon, broccoli, a, a sweet potato, a little dark chocolate for dessert. I love that. You some see red a little wine, wine too? Uh, some red wine. <laughs> We're in. Not so bad. We like that. Salmon, red wine, yeah, chocolate. Sounds like, a, sounds like a great meal. Doctor, thank you very much. Nice thank to have you, you here this morning. Good to be with you.